Hey guys, uh, so this is the second video off of the project for building your first website. So in the last video we covered how to make this. We basically just added some content and some basic styles to actually get this, um, this small personal website uh, looking nice. So now we're going to add some images. We're going to fix up the links and just modify the CSS changes a little bit to make it look a little nicer. Uh, and then after that you're free to modify your, your personal website however you want. Uh, okay, so this is what we had before from the HTML file. So we're actually going to do something interesting for this image source. Um, it'll be a little introduction to using like a really high level API. So what you'll do is you'll Google Unsplash and then you'll go to Unsplash, the website. And this is basically a website that allows you to use um, free images without any um, credit. Well, you can credit, but you don't have to worry about uh, royalties and stuff. So if you click here and you click Developers, they have a little Unsplash Source API, which basically allows you to call a URL and once it loads, call a URL and get an image. So, for example, if I copy this into my URL and paste it, I get a random image. So, we'll use this for our website. We'll use, uh, I guess, a nature category. You can change this to be like animal, animal, or like red if you want. But we'll use nature and then to get a size. You do uh, 800 by, we we'll use 200. So now if we copy this and paste it into our image source here. So this, this will give us a random image, but we need to uh, add some styles for uh, this image. So we'll start, so we, ha we don't have any image, uh, we don't have any CSS for the content, so we'll start that. So we'll have div class content, oops, div class content. And then the content actually, we'll get back to in a second, but we'll do content image. And we'll do width 100%, so it'll take up 100% of the container. Uh, we'll give it a height of 200 pixels. Is that what we're specifying? Yeah, 200. And then border bottom. We'll actually copy this border here so that we have a dotted gray border underneath on both sides. Okay, so now if we check out, oops, if we check out our website, it should load a random image. Yeah, and there it is. So we have this pixel, uh, we have this border bottom on both sides, and we have this nice random image that loads. This, I guess, this is nature related. So yeah, so this is a really cool way to just get like a random nice image for your website. Uh, okay, so now let's get back to styling this stuff. So first we'll just make these links a little smaller because they're a little too big. So they are under header and then anchor. So what we'll do is we'll do header list and then anchor and we'll give it a smaller font size. So we'll give it like font size 17 pixels or something. So normally it is where is it? Font size 26, but we'll give it a font size of 17. Whoops. And yeah, they're a bit smaller now, so it works out. So let's actually add in those links. So here you'd put in your Twitter. So you could do something like HTTP twitter.com slash username. So now if I, so actually let's put in CoderBite. Reload it. If you click on it, it will take us to Yep, there it is. So that's how that works. And then if you want to open it in a new tab, you can do target equals and then underscore blank. And this will open the link in a new tab. So there it is. Uh, okay, and you can do the same thing for Facebook. But for now, I'll just leave it blank. Cause... And then you can add in more, in, uh, more uh, links if you want. So if you have Instagram, you can say Instagram and then you know LinkedIn and whatever else and then they just get added here so we'll get rid of that okay so you can add in your own link here so let's actually leave this blank for you Twitter and then HTTP Facebook.com and then we'll also open this in a new tab Okay, so that's done. Let's get started on the CSS. Uh, okay, so we don't need anything for content right now. 
So the next thing we'll do is we'll change the CSS for this Hello World I am making a website. And you know, here you can have anything you want. You can have a little bio about yourself. But I guess my bio will be Hello, I am making a website. So we access that by content P. Yeah, content P. And then what we can do is we can uh, text line center, we'll center it. And then let's give it a margin top 10 pixels. We'll make a font size a little bigger, so we'll make it 25, and we'll give it a little font style italic. Italicize it. And then here it is. So now feel free to mess with this, and you can make this bigger, you can change the color on it, you can look up some other font styles on Google. So if you type in font style, you have a bunch of things. So you can see italic. Uh, yeah, you have, there are a few other properties, normal. So you can just look those up on Google. So font style italic. Okay, now let's modify these a little to give it like a nice list. So this we specify with content and then unordered list hobbies. Okay, so we can do content. So when you have a class, for example, like here, there are two ways we can access this element. So we can do content unordered list. The problem with this is that if we had another unordered list, so here we have unordered list class hobbies. If we have another unordered list, then both of them are targeted. And so the reason we gave this a class of hobbies is you can specifically target this unordered list by doing hobbies. And another way to do this is actually to do unordered list dot hobbies, and this is more specific. So this will target something with a class name of hobbies that's an unordered list. Because for example, we could have something like a paragraph element with a class of hobbies. So this is legal because you can have two class names that are uh, equal to each other, but here it would only target the unordered list. On the other hand, if you did something like this, both of them are now targeted. The link, cl the class with hobbies, the paragraph element, and the unordered list. So that's just a little um, thing you should remember about specificity in CSS. To get to be more specific is pretty good because you won't by you won't accidentally target other elements. So unordered list class hobbies, and now let's see what we want to do. Let's um, align the align the text. We'll give it some space from the top, mark the top, and then we'll give it a color. So each uh, text color will now be 2F8CDC, and this is like a nice bluish color. So if we reload it now, we have this. Uh, okay, so it's looking a little nicer, but let's give it some sort of background. So now to target each list element, we can do unordered list, hobbies, list. And now we can margin top, margin bottom. So now we give it some space. We'll give it a background color of like a grayish color. We'll give it some padding. So we give it a top and bottom padding of 10 pixels. And then to the left and right, we give it nothing. And then we'll give it a border radius to around the edges. And we get this. So we get something that looks a little nicer. And so now, you have, you know, f uh, feel free to modify this. So there are a lot of cool things you can find online if you look up some CSS properties. So what we can do is actually take this and give it the hover property. Oops, sorry, hover. And then we can change the background. So we can change the background to white and then the color to uh, black. So now if we, when you hover over one of these list elements, this is what you get. And to make it look like a link, you can give it a cursor of uh, pointer. Oops. So by default, link um, anchor tags get a pointer, as you can see here. But we can force it to act like a list, a link, um, a link. So yeah, this is a really basic personal website. You can uh, have these link out to other websites. You can put a little image next to them. So if you did something like uh, here, you can put a little image source. Oh, you got a big, yeah, so you got a big, so the problem, the reason we're getting this huge um, width and height is because here we specified content image, 
So like I was saying before about the specificity, so content and then image. So the problem with this, the problem with this uh, CSS um, content image is that we're getting every single image within the content class. So we have content class and then we have this image and we have this image here. So to be specific and target only this image, we can give it a class and say uh, header image. Now if we copy and we say content image with a class of header image, now this, now this image disappeared because we need to specifically give it a width and height. So now we can do something like, so this image is within hobbies. So now we can do, take this and say any image within hobbies, it'll have a width of 50 pixels and a height of 50 pixels. And so we have this now. And then we can give it a background of gray. So here you go, you have an image. And then, yeah, so you can give it an actual image. You can do the same thing we did from Unsplash, give it a random image. So yeah, that was just a little demonstration. So we'll get rid of that and we'll get rid of this image. So yeah, so this is the finished product of these two basic videos. So I hope you learned some HTML and CSS. Uh, it's really useful when you're stuck to just Google something. So if you wanna, for example, uh, have a hover state on this or make it larger when you hover over it and something like that. You can just Google those types of things, add in the CSS keyword, and you'll get a lot of helpful websites uh, helping you out on how to add some cool CSS. Um, yeah, so in the next few videos, we'll, in, a, in another project, I'll cover some interactivity for your website using JavaScript and jQuery, and we'll cover some more advanced CSS techniques. So thanks for watching.